So what do you do if when you go to read the level on your propane tank, you get a message like this, which indicates an open circuit, or perhaps you get a short circuit message. In this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot the problem. And if it turns out that the propane sensor itself is defective and needs to be replaced, I'm going to show you how to verify that. I'm going to show you how to replace it and to calibrate it. The simplest thing you can start with when troubleshooting this problem is check the other tanks and see if those readings make sense. If that's the case, it's unlikely to be the tank monitor. And it's probably also unlikely to be the connections in the back since the wires are bundled together in two connectors that fit on the back. So in order to get to the propane tank and the sensor that's attached to it, I'm going to have to crawl under the back of the RV. Now, I don't recommend you do this unless you really know what you're doing, because there is the possibility of getting trapped under there, uh, having the van roll over you. And since I'm going to be working close to the equalizer system, that's another uh, crushing hazard. So if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how to do this safely, I recommend you get a qualified technician to replace the propane sensor. So the propane tank is located behind the rear wheels in the center of the undercarriage of the RV. And then the tank sensor is located up in this space on the side of the RV. So here's the sensor here. There's the dial indicator part, and then here's the electronic sensor. And the two wires come off the electronic sensor and they connect with this connector to a pair of wires, a white and yellow wire that go back behind the control panel above the steps and into the back of the sea level monitor. Now, the question is how you get this off and this is designed with four clips. You can see one of the clips here at the bottom. So there's four of those clips that rigidly attach to a round cup coming out of the propane tank. And I'll describe later how this actually functions. But in the at this point, the question is how do you get this off? So you want to disconnect here and then you're going to have to pry this off. And it is on there tight. When I took mine off, it was a little disconcerting at first because I thought I was going to break something. But when I show you an image of the sensor uh, on the table, and you can see those four clips, you'll get a good idea of how it's attached. And you just pry the clips off. I did it with my fingers without any tools. And once you get one of the clips off, uh, it'll come off easily there. And then the new sensor, and I'll show you a link to that down below the video, comes with bare pigtails. So what I did here with the, the new one, I had to reuse this connector, this end of the connector. So I cut the wires off the old one and splice the wires from the new one onto that connector. It's as simple as that. Not difficult at all. Certainly not rocket science. So here's the defective sensor that I removed from my RV. I had to clip off the connector at these points on this wire because the new sensor I bought just has bare pigtails. And I had to use the connector uh, again and simply soldered the ends of the new sensor to the wires to the bare wires on the connector and everything then fits together electrically just fine. So this is the sensor and let's take a look at how does it attach. If you look at the side you will see that it has these four, one, two, three, four clips and here's a side view 
and the clips actually have ridges on them. And so these fit over a round flange on the side of the propane tank. So they actually snap into place. And when you go to take the existing sensor off the tank, you will notice it's on there very tight. I was a little concerned because I'd never taken one off before and didn't know exactly how it clipped on. I was afraid I was gonna break the clips or something, but you just pull on one end, try to pry it off, and then it'll come right off. So that's how it connects. Take one off and you put the other one on. And as I said, when you buy these online, and I'll put a link to the one I got down below the video where it says show more, it'll come with bare pigtails. So make sure you reuse the connector that's on there already. So how does this work? Well, it consists of two parts. It consists of this dial indicator. So you can read the tank level if you crawl underneath and look at the red dial indicator. And then the other part, the black part that sits on front is a magnetic sensor in there. And the resistance of that magnetic sensor varies as the magnetic field it sees varies. So basically this is a 90 ohm nominal resistor and that resistance, the 90 ohm changes and that's the electrical reading you get on the sea level monitor. Now how does the sensor know what the tank level is and how does it know when it's varying? Well if you look on the back side you will see this red piece here and these two shiny things are magnets. And inside the propane tank is a float which goes up and down with the level of the tank. And the end of that float is connected through gears to a magnet on the backside of the attachment point for this sensor. And those gears rotate a magnet that's inside the tank as the float level moves down. And so here's a magnet here as this rotates see the Dow indicator rotating and at the same time the resistance inside here is changing and that's how you get a different electrical signal at the sea level monitor. Now how do you set the tank level to the proper reading and the easiest way to do that is have your tank fully filled which will be the 80 percent point and then you can come in here with an external magnet adjust this to just pass three quarters, whatever you consider 80%, and then you attach it, remove the magnet, and then attach it to the tank, and now you're calibrated. It's not perfect, but that's the way they do it at the factory, at the LTV factory. I spoke to the guys over there. They explained that's what they do, and you get it in that position where you think it represents the fill level and you're good to go. And you have to remember that the propane is sensitive to temperature and it builds up more or less pressure inside. So the reading is not 100% accurate to begin with. So I wouldn't stress over estimating 80% fill on the Dow indicator. Okay, using an ohm meter, we can see that this sensor that I took off is in fact defective. You see that it's an open circuit. And so the thin film sensor in there is defective, probably burned out. So hopefully if you get surprised like I was, when you try to check the propane level on your tank, you find an open or short circuit message, you'll know how to get to the root of the problem and figure out whether you have a defective sensor and if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you know what you're doing and can do it safely, you can see that it really was not difficult at all to replace the sensor. Now, as I said before, I'll put a link to the sensor that works on my LTV Leisure Travel Van Unity RV. And it's pretty common, I think, on a lot of other RVs. And that will be down below where you see it say, See More. And if you learned something useful from this video, I hope you will like the video. 
also subscribe so you can see more videos like this. And please do use my links down below. That's how you can support my channel and I can make more videos like this. So thank you for watching.